when the Lamb opened the seventh seal, silence covered the sky. Shabbat Shalom, Senbet Salam. Greetings. This is Arasi Adinos Tefari, Wendem Yadin, and this is the 12th Sabbath sabbatical reading known as Tekemeta, or Wai Yechi, Wai Yechi, or Vai Yechi. Tekemeta, he said, and it begins in the Orit Zemuse, or the Torah of our. Coptic Hebrew brother Moshe or Musa, Genesis chapter 47 verse 28 to Genesis chapter 50. And this is the 12th Sabbath. There are 12 Sabbatical readings or 12 uh, parashiot or kufloch portions. Um, 50 chapters to the book of Genesis and the Nabiyat or the Haftarah reading is 1 Kings chapter 2 verse 1 to 12 and the Hadith Kidan or the Burt Hadasha is 1 Petros or Kepha Peter chapter 1 verses 1 to 9 and what we like to do here is to review review this portion of the book of Genesis concerning Yosef or Joseph's story, the story of Joseph. When we first um, got into the portion of Joseph, we had made a note that Joseph is a type, is a type of of Christ, or he is a he is a type of Christ or Christos. Now, <clears throat> what we would like to do is to review this portion for the 12th sabbatical reading to go over this portion because there's certain parts that we didn't get to upload concerning the story of Yosef or, or Joseph, especially as it is bottomed out from its natural and spiritual genesis, speaking of Ethiopia and speaking of Egypt, concerning the types and the and the um prototypes and the antitypes as well that are contained in the Kamite mythos concerning the Hebraic Genesis or what we know as the Hebrew Bible and what we call now the Ethiopic Genesis. Now what we're gonna do is begin from chapter we're gonna review. This is gonna be a review from chapter thirty seven to chapter fifty, an overview. And there's an interesting book that we found on the Google. It's called Notes on the Book of Genesis by a, a C.W. Uh, McIntosh, C.W. McIntosh, roughly around 1880. The book was published 1880. We were perusing and reading this book earlier in in the past week, and we noticed that it it has some very important analogies and comparisons, and it's a very um, good Christian-based book that we would like to share with our brothers and sisters, especially as we disciple and are, through the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, discipled in and through the King of Kings and His Christ, the Mashiach, Yahushua. Now, we're going to go over some of this and also add, according to the Holy Spirit, what is, is given to us to share in this. So we're going to begin roughly around page 315, page 315. And it says this, it says, um, There's not in Scripture a more perfect and beautiful type of Christ or Mashiach, anointed one, than Yosef, Iusef. Whether we view Christ as the object of the Father's love, the object of envy of, quote, his own, end quote, in his humiliation, sufferings, death, exaltation, and glory, in all, we have him strikingly typified by Joseph or Joseph. In chapter 30. Seven, we have Yosef's dreams, the statement of which draws out the enmity of his 
brethren, his Wendemoch. He was the object of his father's love and the subject of very high destinies. And inasmuch as the hearts of his brethren were not in communion with these things, they hated him. They had no fellowship in the father's love. And they would not yield to the thought of Yosef's exaltation. Hmm. In all this, they represent the Jews in Christ's day. Or the Ethiopians, the careless Ethiopians in the day of Negusenegesk, Adamawi Haile Selassie, the king of kings of Ethiopia. Quote, he came to his own, and his own received him not. Now, what's very interesting right here, we're going to pause right here in the reading of C.W. Uh, McIntosh's notes on the book of Genesis to state this. This is interesting. What he um, highlights here, he says that Yosef, as Christ, was the object of his father's love and the subject of very high destinies. And as much as the hearts of his brethren were not in communion with these things, they hated him because their hearts were not in communion, in common union with these things, they hated him like many of our careless Hebrew, black Hebrews like brothers um, also hate us as the true Aras Teferi and they hate Negus Negest the anointed king of Israel the king of kings of Ethiopia upon the throne of David because their hearts, their heads and their hearts are not in communion with these things. They had no fellowship in the Father's love, and they would not yield. They would not yield to the thought of Yosef's exaltation, much like the Ehud in Christos' day would not yield to the thought of Yehoshua, Yesus, Iusu, exaltation, just like those who will not yield to the thought of Aras Teferi's exaltation. So this is interesting because it says, quote, He came to his own, and his own received him not. His own did not Kabbalah, Kebbalah. His own did not receive him. He had, quote, no form nor comeliness in their eyes, in their perspectives, to their perspectives, to their non or excommunion thoughts and, and hearts, they would neither they they would neither own him as the son of God nor the king of Israel. Their eyes were not opened to behold quote his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father full of grace and truth. They would not have him. Yea, oh, they hated him. Now, in Yosef's case, we see that he in no wise relaxed his testimony in consequence of his brethren's refusal of his first dream. Quote, and Yosef dreamed a dream. And he told it to his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. And he dreamed yet another dream, and told it to his brethren. End quote. This was simple testimony, founded upon divine revelation. But it was testimony which brought Yosef down to the pit. Had he kept back his testimony or taken off aught of its edge and power, he might have speared himself. But no, he told them the truth and therefore they hated him. There's a lesson for us, brethren. There's a lesson for us, Sam, in this. That he spoke to them the truth. See, if you're hated, especially for speaking the truth, 
especially if you keep the edge, don't take off anything of the edge or the power of the truth, as we also have been attempting to do with these postings and with the half of the story that hasn't been told until now, you will find that even your own brethren, even your own family, you understand, your so-called fleshy, because the spiritual will not, but the fleshy will hate you as well. So Joseph, Yosef is a very important objective lesson, a very important case in point. And we're going to continue with this summary, this summary from chapters 37 to chapter 50, inclusive of this, the 12th sabbatical reading and feeding, Tekemete Waiyechi, which is from Genesis 47, 28 to Genesis 50, 